Now just before I begin building the skeleton, there's something I wanted to cover that will help expedite the speed at which we create our skeletons and our rigs. It has to do with drawing skeletons. Now the problem when we draw a skeleton is that if we shade the character we can't see inside of the character to actually place the skeleton properly. You can see the bones that stick out of the character, but the bones that are inside, which most of them will be, are completely invisible. Now you can access uh, a sort of transparency on this character by enabling a tool called X-ray shading. It's found under display options and X-ray mode. We can toggle that X-ray mode on and off and basically see through our character um, to the, the innards, if you will. The problem with this is that it takes a little while to get at it, having to get into display options and enable or disable each time, and it's a per window tool. So having the display options turned on in the camera B window does not necessarily mean that they will be turned on in the right view D window. There is a global way of doing this. If I was to use the display drop down menu at the top of XSI and access the display options for all cameras, we could do this through here as well. But again, I need to go into a menu and again, that's a little bit time consuming, especially when you've got all these attributes that um, just kind of overwhelm you a little bit. So I'm going to make this a little simpler but just by writing a little piece of code. If we were to go back in, let's say, to our right viewport and enable x-ray mode, I'm just going to pull up a script editor here. So we can see what's going on. You can see if I toggle that button on and off, we're just basically setting a value on a particular view, view, view D, our right camera. We're setting a value on its camera display x-ray shaded attribute. And we're either setting that value to be true or false. That's the on-off nature of the radio checkbox. There's an interesting command in XSI that can pull both set value true false statements and replace them with an on off switch. So if it's on, turn it off. If it's off, turn it on. And it's called toggle value. And if I press F1 just uh, with my cursor inside the toggle value word or just at the end of it, uh, you can see it was introduced back in version 1. And it just toggles Boolean attributes, so radio checkboxes. And it does so by pulling in first a parameter name, the x ray shaded attribute. So that would be this attribute here. And followed up by a list of input objects the input objects being um, the view, view D that we are looking for, and the right camera. So front camera could be views, view A, front camera. And notice that as you get deeper into the views attribute, we use dots to separate um, a progression deeper into that object's hierarchy. You can see that the toggle value works a little bit differently than set value in that it has the parameter name at the beginning rather than at the end. So I'm just going to restructure this set value statement to work for toggle value. So we'll take first of all the toggle value and again if you need help with this I'm just going to alt tab back in. We have an example of how toggle value works. So we isolate the attribute in, uh, in a string, so grid visibility separated by a comma then followed up by um, the name of the object or the path that we need to get to the object and the attribute. So instead of camviz it would be camera display as we can see right here. So I'm going to toggle value, um, open string, the x-ray shaded attribute, close, separate that by a comma, and then another string. So instead of actually using views.viewd.writeCamera, we'd have to set a lot of these up. We can use the good old wildcard, the asterisk, to represent any view so star dot star, so whether it's view A, B, C, or D, star will refer to any of those. And rather than specifying right camera, top camera, front camera, or camera or user camera, we'll use another wildcard. Finally, we have gone th three levels into our object view, view D, right camera. Now we need to access the display attribute. So now we can add the camera display uh, attribute. And that's all we need. If I toggle this now, you can see that in both the camera view and the right view, our script works. So that's the first part of it. We have this script in the script editor, and now we need to actually 
utilize that script, maybe um, drop it onto a button, or make some sort of a hotkey that we can use rather than having to open this uh, script editor each time and run the script.